On the news, Senedge releases report an NDDC probe alleges 1.3 trillion naira spending in five years as Godswill Okabu denied claim that lawmakers have been major beneficiaries of NDDC contracts. United Nations condemn execution of five aid workers by Boko Haram insurgents. And Uganda's Museveni emerges candidate of ruling party in forthcoming presidential election. Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Annetta Felix. The Nigerian Senate has asked the Interim Management Committee in the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, to refund the sum of 4.923 billion naira payment made to staff and members of the Commission in breach of procurement and approval with immediate effect. The Upper Chamber also called for the dissolution of the agency's Interim Management Committee, IMC. In a detailed report which was submitted to the Senate Plenary on Thursday by the committee chairman investigating the alleged financial recklessness in NDDC, Senator Olubumi Adekotokumi, it was revealed that the NDDC spent 1.334 trillion naira in five years. He said the IMC was involved in reckless spending where they spent based on cash accounting and not based on the budget. Almost all through this period, those that have been given the responsibility to manage the resources of the NDDC and for the people of the Niger Delta have squandered most of the resources, leaving the region poor and in a very difficult situation. It is our opinion in the National Assembly, particularly in the Senate, that this report has exposed the inefficiencies, the, 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 the kind of corruption in the, in, the, in the NDDC. I am sure that our report will receive the kind of attention that we all desire and expect. Still with the NDDC, Minister of Ninety Delta Affairs, Godswill Pabu, says the two chairmen of the committee probing the affairs of the commission are aware of the identity of the lawmakers who received contracts from the NDDC. Pabu said this in a letter written to the Green Chambers and read on the floor by the Speaker, Femi Bajabiamila, on Thursday. In the letter, the minister said he never referred to members of the Ninth Assembly as beneficiaries of the NDDC contract. After having read the letter on the floor of the House, the letter was handed to the Committee on Ethics and Privileges for further examination. Akpabio's letter came a few minutes after the House of Representatives resolved to institute a legal suit against the minister following the expiration of a 48-hour ultimatum. On Tuesday, the House issued an ultimatum to Akpabio to publish the names of lawmakers whom he claimed had received contracts from the Niger Delta Development Commission. Tolu Lokwe Arutile, the first female combat helicopter pilot of the Nigerian Armed Forces uh, Air Force, has been laid to rest at the military cemetery in Abuja. The funeral ceremony was attended by many dignitaries, including the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Abubakar Sadiq, Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Oloni Shaki, and Kogi State Governor Yahaya Bello, among others. Arutile died from head injuries after she was hit by a car at the Air Force Base in Kaduna on July 14. Tony Lope, while you fulfill your child long dream of becoming a pilot, we could only scratch the surface of our collective dream as a service for you. We remain comforted by the peace which only God grants us all at this moment and at all times. From God we came, and to him alone we shall all return. Your memory will remain indelibly marked in our hearts each time we remember you. Thank you for adding so much value towards our contribution to national security, even though for a short time. 
as you go to your final resting place, may the Lord be with you and be assured that the Nigerian Air Force and indeed the nation will remain ever grateful to you for your meaningful contributions and dedication. The United Nations has condemned the killing of five aid workers by suspected Boko Haram terrorists. In a 34 seconds video released on Wednesday, the insurgents shot to death five max men who they're accused of working with the infidels. The men were abducted last month while traveling from Meduguri to Mungono on June 29, 2020. Reacting to the brutal murder of the aid workers, UN humanitarian coordinator in Nigeria, Edward Kalon, said it is unacceptable that those who are trying to help have been attacked and killed. The five aid workers were employees of humanitarian agencies, Action Against Hunger and International Rescue Committee. Unknown gunmen have kidnapped four Chinese construction workers from Cross River State. Their abduction was confirmed by the state police spokesperson Irene Toha. She said a policeman working with the Chinese nationals was killed during the abduction which occurred near a quarry site in the remote area of Akwangpa on Tuesday night. Itoha also revealed that security personnel have been deployed to search for the expatriates. Kidnapping for ransom is rampant across Nigeria, with both locals and foreigners targeted. President Mohamed Buhari has arrived at Mali on a one-day visit aimed at finding a political solution to the crisis in the country. Buhari's visit follows Tuesday's briefing by the ECOWAS special envoy to the country, former President Goodluck Jonathan. While in Mali, President Buhari is expected to meet with ECOWAS chairman, President Isofu Mamadou of Niger Republic, and they will together engage in further consultations towards finding a political solution to the crisis in Mali. The two leaders are expected to be joined by the host president, Ibrahim Bobakita, and uh, President Makisal of Senegal, Nana Akufado of Ghana, and uh, Alassane Kutara of Cote d'Ivoire, respectively. An uprising against President Keita, headed by a resistance group known as the M5, has led to mass protest and killings in the country in the past weeks. The Deputy Speaker of the Niger State House of Assembly, Bako Alpha, has resigned. Alpha, a member representing Bida One at the House, made his resignation known through a letter he submitted to the House, which was read during Thursday's plenary. The Speaker, Abdullahi Wusi, who read the letter on the floor of the House, however, did not give details on why the Deputy Speaker resigned. Meanwhile, the House has nominated Jibrin Baba representing Leuven constituency as the new deputy speaker. Let's take a break here, but still to come. Lagos State uh, says COVID-19 cases to peak in August as national tally surges by 543 in the past 24 hours. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if this thing he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by other people in Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you. You're welcome back. Here are some of our top stories tonight. The Senate and her committee probing the activities of the 90 Development Commission 
NDDC says the commission has expended the sum of 1.3 trillion naira in the last five years. The lawmakers have now recommended the dissolution of the Interim Management Committee of the Commission. Minister of Ninth Delta Affairs Gatu Akabio says he never referred to members of the Ninth Assembly as beneficiaries of the NDDC contract. Akabio, in a letter written to the Green Chambers today, however, insisted that the two chairmen of the committee probing the affairs of the Commission are aware of the identity of lawmakers who received contracts from the NDDC. We also told you that President Muhammad Buhari has arrived in Mali on a one day visit aimed at finding a political solution. To the crisis in the country. While in the West African country, President Buhari is expected to meet with other African leaders and together find a solution to the political crisis working in the country. Let's now move to our COVID-19 coverage. Nigeria has recorded 543 new COVID-19 cases. This takes the COVID-19 case number in Nigeria to 38,344. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, disclosed this on Wednesday night via Twitter, adding that the new cases were reported across 14 states and the federal capital territory. Lagos remains the epicenter of the virus with 180 new cases, followed closely by the federal capital territory with 86 new infections. Nigeria successfully discharged the total of 15,815 persons who have recovered from the virus, but 813 persons have died from the disease. The novel coronavirus is likely to peak in the month of August. Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Aki Abayami, disclosed this during a press briefing which held in Alausa Ikeja on Thursday. Abayami said, based on postulations, COVID-19 cases would peak by the month of August but expressed hopes that the curve would eventually get flattened. Lagos is among the states with the highest concentrated cases of COVID-19, amounting to 13,806, followed by the FCT with 3,000. 297 cases. According to our modeling, we expect that Lagos will theoretically peak in the month of August and then it will flatten out and after some time we will start to see a decrease in the number of cases. So this is modeling, it's not a hard science. We look at trends, we look at the community, and we apply mathematical modeling to give us some idea of a prediction of what's likely to happen in Lagos. Sometimes we get it right, and sometimes we're slightly off. But according to what's happening at the moment, the model predicts that somewhere in the month of August, Lagos will reach its peak. Sultan of Sokoto, Saad Abubakar, has asked district heads and religious leaders to lead Eid prayers in Jamaat Mosque instead of Eid grounds. The spiritual head of Muslims in the country gave the advice while declaring July 31st as the celebration of Eid al-Kabri. Eid al-Kabri, which literally means Feast of Sacrifice, is an Islamic festival involving the killing of rams to commemorate the willingness of Prophet Ibrahim to follow Allah's command to sacrifice his son Ismail. In a statement on Wednesday, Abu Bakr enjoined Muslim faithful to pray for peace, progress and development in the country. America has recorded a milestone of nearly 4 million coronavirus cases on Thursday. This comes as the daily toll in the U.S., the daily death toll, topped 1,000 for the second consecutive day. California recorded new highs on both COVID-19 cases and deaths on Wednesday with more than 422,000 cases. 
California's case tally has now eclipsed out of New York, the early epicenter of the U.S. pandemic. President Donald Trump has announced that the federal government will provide five billion U.S. dollars to vulnerable nursing homes to help them counter the virus. The World Health Organization has warned of the threat posed by COVID-19 to health workers across Africa. More than 10,000 health workers in the 40 countries which have reported on such infections have been infected with COVID-19 so far, a sign of the challenges medical staff on the front lines of the outbreak face. There are now more than 750,000 cases of COVID-19 in South Africa with over 15,000 deaths. Let's now take a break here to join Oni Adekini with the latest business stories. the volume of your music is too loud. And how is that your business? It is disturbing me, I can't sleep. And the same way you are disturbing my right to good music and where I enjoy it. Eh? What's wrong with you? Is there another person complaining? Uh, maybe we thought that uh, you have lost your mind. Party. Are you having a party? I'm just respecting you, sir. You remember, I've paid my husband too. You will not understand why we are complaining because you do not care about other people except yourself. Look, the transformation we need in this country begins in this compound. Yes, now. From you, you, and I. This, your selfishness is an offshoot of corruption. Uh -huh. And corruption, not, not in, in my, my country. country. Oh, you know. Eh? Can you go, go to your bank? Go. Corruption, not in my country. Welcome back. Let's hand over now to Onye Adekunle for the latest stories in the world of business. Thank you very much, Aneta. The Federal Executive Council, FEC, has approved a sum of 283.25 billion naira for two contracts and a foreign component of $18.12 million. The Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, disclosed this while briefing State House correspondents at the end of the ninth virtual meeting. The meeting was again presided over by President Mohamed Buhari at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. Adeshawa Odushoga reports. For many years now, the Nigerian Customs Service has had to deal with the issue of smuggling on the Nigerian waterways. Series of arrests have been made and one of the most recent policies by the federal government is the closure of its borders to control smuggling of some agricultural products into the country. More efforts are now emerging with the approval of over 280 billion naira for the design, construction and supply of five ballistic assault boats and five patrol boards for the Nigerian Customs Service. This was disclosed by the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja. These are large size cargo scanners that will be placed in uh, on a port, Port Aka, uh, a port and Tinkam port. So it's scanners that you can actually drive um, containers through. That will hasten uh, inspection and obviate the need for the customs to open containers and do the inspection, physical inspection as they are doing now that is costing us a lot of time. On the area of infrastructural development, the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, disclosed that the council approved a policy for the local production of bitumen that has been used for road construction to create jobs for Nigerians. This will of course help to further diversify the economy, open another subsector of the extractive and uh, hydrocarbon industry for local opportunities. We see a demand of 500,000 tons, metric tons of bitumen locally per annum. 
A sum of 75 billion naira was also approved for the establishment of a Nigerian Youth Investment Fund to be otherwise known as Youth Bank. The Minister of Youth and Sport, Sunday Dari, who disclosed this to State House correspondent, said the fund would be used to support youth enterprise among Nigeria's 68 million youth between ages of 18 and 35. This fund for is meant to create a special window for assessing funds, credit facilities, and fina financing on the part of our youth that will help to fund their ideas, innovation, and also support their enterprise. It's the ninth virtual Federal Executive Council meeting since COVID-19 broke out in Nigeria, and the meeting will be taking this form for as long as the new cases of the pandemic have been recorded in the various parts of the country. Adesha Waldushaga, TV360, Abuja. The Senate has resolved to review an agreement signed by the federal government in 2015 with some power generating companies. The companies are Zura and ACU Gas. According to the lawmakers, Nigeria loses between $30 million to, 50, to $33 million to Azura for power generated, whether it is distributed or not. We have uh, installed capacity of 13,000 megawatts. Meanwhile, transmission are saying that they can wheel about 7,000, and then distribution are saying that well, what we can take is only 3,500. So there has to be an alignment. If we are generating 13,000, and uh, transmission is wheeling 13,000, and distribution is also distributing 13,000, Mr. President, the problem of electricity supply in this country would have been solved. So we realize that there has to be an alignment in the sector for us to achieve or for the president to achieve the promise which he makes to Nigeria of giving them electricity. As a parliament, let us get copies of all those agreements. Let us get people who are experts to give us an independent assessment and interpretation, clause by clause, of those, whether we can have exculpatory amicuses. I don't believe there's an agreement that cannot be faulted. And I don't believe an agreement that pay 100% obligation to service it. Clearly, those agreements will need to be cancelled because they don't have capacity. Because listening to, to, to uh, my colleague, OUK, you know, for even if it takes 100 years, there will be no solution. No matter what the kind of money you pump in, we're going to be back to square one. So something very, very drastic and radical, you know, will have to be done here. If we will be giving these people, these companies, 700 billion, 600 billion, to the tune of over 1.5 trillion at the moment. And this thing is endless. I think the time has come for us to consider this privatization. Let's take a pause here and return with Stock Market Review. Don't go away. Emerging from marginal loss, equity investors on the NSC saw a rebound today as previously beaten down stocks bounced back to appear attractive to investors. Consequently, the all share index uh, rose by 1.40% to close at 24,512 uh, basis points. High cap stocks uh, like Dangote Cement and MTN Nigeria pushed the market up today, and positive movement in the banking sector also contributed to the uptick, even though some of the biggest banks banking stocks were not the toast of investors today. And in terms of percentage laggards, BUA Cement topped the loser's table with 3.50% to close at 40 naira per share. Dangote uh, Sugar came second with 2.50% to close at 11 naira and 70 kobo. Name it and Echo Bank also declined by 7.58%. That's collective. And meanwhile, the total turnover at the market today was 164.2 million units of shares and that exchange hands in 2,986 deals. We're moving on now to the foreign scene. Uh, FTSE is higher. Dow Jones opened lower today while Japanese markets uh, were closed on holiday.
And that's it on business. It's back to you now, Anita. Thanks for the business update, Oyi. Moving on now, Uganda's ruling party, a national resistance movement, has announced President Yoweri Museveni as its presidential candidate for the general election scheduled for January 2021. The nomination sets the stage for the 75-year-old president to extend his rule for four decades after rising to power in 1986 through an armed rebellion. Meanwhile, the country's main opposition leader and pop star, Robert Kiangiliani, has launched his National Unity Platform Party ahead of the presidential elections. Uganda is set to hold general elections in January 2021, when President Yoram Museveni is expected to seek a sixth term in office. Talking sports now, former Arsenal boss Unai Emery has been appointed as head coach of La Liga side Villarreal on a three-year deal. The Spaniard was relieved of his duties at Emirates Stadium in November 2019 after just 18 months in North London. He was acquired by the Gunners as successor to the legendary Asen Wenger, but found it difficult to fill big coaching shoes and deliver an expectation. Villarreal ended the 2019-2020 campaign with a fifth-place finish in La Liga, meaning that they will be taking part in the Europa League next season, a competition that Emery boasts a rich history in. And that's it on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. Many thanks for watching.